Welcome back. This episode is not really a clue. I'm just going to call it the grand finale. Uh, we are going to do some finishing up. So I want you to uh, turn this pocket. Just start on either one of your pockets. Hopefully you've saved yourself a long tail when you started your um, bottom section right there. What we're going to do here is whip stitch this up and it goes really fast. Um, instead of holding it like this, I suggest that you take your ribbing section and just fold it down. So that creates a nice edge to edge area for you to work. And um, I don't worry about the whip stitching showing. My main focus is to try to get at least two strands. I um, try to space them a quarter inch to a half inch, maybe three eighths of an inch um, apart as I whip stitch. So what I do is I go between the two color A's, we'll call that color A, your body and your pocket, and um, just pick up a couple strands of each. So that's going to start my first whip stitch. And now my next one, just keep moving your hands along, keeping that fold down. That keeps the ribbing out of your way. My next one is going to be right between the next two stitches of the tan. So it's a matter of folding, refolding, and be careful not to stretch your pocket too much. You don't want to end up with a bunch to smush in at the end to make it fit. Just keep them both held at the same tension. You don't want either, either edge to stretch on you. So I just keep going along down this, these two edges here. Try not to catch up too much. Go too deep on the body portion that's to the back. And I don't worry about this fold being just so until I get to it. Just take your time and stitch it. You really don't have that many stitches to do. There's no reason uh, to rush this. It's funny, the phone screen uh, looks better than it looks in person for me doing it. <laughs> Don't pull your thread too tight. Just a nice, uh, just till it's smooth. You don't want anything puckering up. Again, we're not going into the ribbing. Unless you have the same color ribbing and that doesn't bother you. I try just to stick with the body, you know, the back of the pocket and the front of the pocket. Sorry, my yarn keeps getting in the way. I don't even have any other lights on. The phone's doing a really good job. Just go right in between those ribbing stitches. And you can stop and look at it that way. See if you're happy with that. This is why I left the pockets kind of blowing in the breeze as we went along and did the ribbing because it just, it makes this so much smoother than trying to do the ribbing through both layers of the pocket. So 
I'm just going to finish up this side of this pocket and then I'm going to get on to showing you how to do a tassel. Um, I'm sure there's some tassel makers out there if you uh, don't want to do so much work, but I'll tell you what, you do a couple tassels the way I do it and after like two or three you're going to get really proficient at it and um, it took me my second or third round of them on another project to really get it down to not having any ends to bury in. That dawned on me. I was like, hey, I can do this instead of that. And it really uh, shortened up my process. It takes me maybe 10 minutes to make a tassel. That's 50 wraps around this book that I use. And... Um, to stitch it on I put a few knots in there around the needle <clears throat> as I go and that holds everything in place just right so I'm, I've gotten once you get to your ribbing at the top of the pocket just stop and take a peek and see where the top of the pocket is falling mine just happens to be just right for me I don't have any stretching or any smushing in to do but you can do that if you need to. Just don't try to overly do either way. <laughs> Sorry, I keep bumping the phone. It gets a little harder to see right here for some reason. I think because both of these sections are so dark. But what you're aiming for is to get right at the top, you know, where clue one ended and clue two started. Okay, now I've reached the corner of the pocket. I'm going to make sure I get right into that corner of the pocket so there's no nubby thing sticking out. And I'm going to take a stitch right there for the last one. And then I'm going to doubly secure that one. I'm going to go around it once more to hold that in place. Now I'm going to just take a few, let me get a few strands of yarn here, insert your needle right where you just went around, okay, and wrap your the top of your needle two to three times, hold it with your thumb and your finger, and pull your needle through that. That creates a small knot, tighten it up pretty good. And then you're going to bury it. I just let it ride in between the, that's when I unfold it. I just let it ride kind of in between the double crochet at the bottom of the rib. And if you're working with single ply yarn, I really recommend that you um, be secure with knotting it. Like if you're working with it, um, a single ply yarn you might want to just stop again and make another knot just to doubly secure that yarn so that it doesn't come out in the wash if you're working with four ply do it your normal way of bearing your tails um, you might want to go back and forth on itself a couple times back and forth, back and forth. So this is four ply, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop there. I've buried it down, get where you can see, buried it down the pocket from the top into about four inches down into the pocket. So that is how you stitch up 
the sides of your pocket. And there's how your seam should look. I don't even, you can't really see the whip stitching much with this particular yarn I used. But I, I don't even mind seeing the whip stitching. I, I think whip stitching is really cute and funky and gives it even more of a boho look. Okay, so I'm going to pause this here. Um, I want you to find a hardback book to use. Um, it doesn't matter if it's got a paper cover on it or not. I'm going to grab my little Billy Graham book I use and we will start making a tassel. So you're going to, for your tassel, you're going to need your yarn needle and you're going to need a ball of yarn. If you were picky with uh, where your new skein started with the color runs, if you used a color changing yarn, you might have some balls where you took some of the extra yarn out to get to a certain color. So that's what I have here and uh, this is enough to do at least one big tassel and I have been doing 50 wraps because I like big tassels that are chunky uh, but this is not as chunky as my test piece was my test piece was a little bit chunkier it, look, it looks more dense but I'm gonna probably do 40 to 50 wraps around the book so grab your book and then rejoin me Okay, so here's my book. Let's just measure this real quick. I like long tassels, especially with uh, this, the scale, the length of this piece. Uh, this book is about six and a quarter inches wide. And I start wrapping like this with the spine up. See if I can get the camera a little bit better. I'm trying to make it where you can see what I'm doing. I've backed up the camera and put it up higher and done all kinds of stuff with my gooseneck. So um, let it hang down. You can trim that extra off later. I just hold it with my thumb and I just gently wrap the book. Let me throw my ball on the floor. You don't want to get it too tight, but just try to keep your tension even. If you get it too tight, it's going to be more difficult to slide off of the edge. So continue wrapping. And I'm going to continue wrapping. Um, when you get it as thick as you think you want it, then just stop your wrapping. That's fine. Um, I'll tell you how many wraps I did when I, when I decide on where I want to be. I'm going to pause this and keep wrapping because I need to count. Okay, so I did the 40 wraps on this one. I think that's as thick as I want it to be because you've got you know both sides for your thickness once the tassel is completed. All right, so uh, you're going to stop on the side that has the pages and um, flip it over. You just set it down for a minute as well. Um, take the yarn that's still attached to your ball and leave yourself a good, I'm going to say at least 36 inches to work with. Because this is the final wrap. And we want to have plenty of tail to work with uh, so that we don't run short and have to tie more yarn in because if you run short and tie more yarn in you're going to have tails to bury that is what we're working against so this first tail that you started with is a complete wrap right there that's kind of a half a wrap so then take your book you were holding it with the spine up we're going to take it and flip it and just hold your yarn there with your finger this is my working yarn that I was wrapping with and now I've got my yarn needle on there when I set the book down and you're going to go underneath there's a little gap there between the wraps and the pages so just go underneath right there boy this is hard to do on camera 
slowing me down. So it doesn't matter. See that the wrap started right there and I'm losing my battery. The wrap started right there. I'm going to stop here and um, get plugged in. Okay, so once you've gone under that once, you're going to hold that in place. You're going to pass your needle back underneath that tassel. This is the top of your tassel that we're making. We're securing it all together. And try to keep your strand right there in the middle of the book. Okay, so you've got one complete wrap around there. Give it a little tug so it cinches in a little bit like an hourglass. Put your finger back on it. Pass it through at least two more times. You can do a third time if you want. Just giving it a little tug each time because you're letting go of that thread. It loosens up a little bit. Just each time I'm getting it back to where it was. And I give it a tug. Okay, I'm going to go around it one more time. Okay, so now we've got our little hourglass. All our threads are in the one spot. Then drop that thread down out of your way and go underneath several of those wraps around the top. Take your thread, hold, hold it there with your finger over where you placed your needle. Wrap the top of your needle two to three times. I'm doing three. And begin to push your needle through it. This plastic needle is a little harder to work with to get to pull through there if I get it too tight. I recommend you use one of the metal needles. So there you've got your, your knot placed right there. So that's secure. We're going to let the needle hang on the thread right there. We're going to set it down. What we're going to do is we're going to slide this off of the book. Just both one end at a time, ease it towards the end of the book. You don't want to, you know, have it come flying off there. Sorry for the noise. If you hear anything, the lawn guys are out there weed eating, it sounds like. So now it's off the book, and I've got my thumb through the loop of yarn. So let that hang there. Then you're going to grab a good pair of sharp scissors, keeping that on your index finger. We're going to open up the scissors, place your yarn loop in, in between the blades of your scissors, and you're going to hold it like a slingshot, like that. Put a little tension on your scissors. So spread your hands apart just a bit. Make sure you keep the, the middle of your tassel right there. And then go ahead and cut. So that got it pretty even. All right, now you don't want to disturb this a whole lot. You can pet it a little bit as you hold that middle. And kind of like making those little ghosts with the, with the tissue. Um, hold it like it's got a little head to it. That's what this reminds me of, is making the little ghosts for Halloween when I was a kid. So now we're going to go right next to the knot. Go into toward the middle of the tassel. And then when you hit your thumb, about right there, you're going to bring the needle out. You'll see where we're going with this in just a minute. So now we're going to pull it up slightly. And we're going to start wrapping this loose at first. So you see that's the height that you want. I do about an inch up here. So I've wrapped it once. Give it a little tug. And you just want it to cinch in nicely. And wrap it a few more times. Okay. 
I went about three or four times. And then we're going to hold it like that. Place your needle in there. Just like we did it to the top. Get underneath a couple strands. Now hold the needle. Wrap your needle a few times. One, two, three. Hold it with your thumb and pull your needle through. I wish I could find my metal needle. It's much easier. Uh, loosen up that, that wrap. Okay. So, and you can see I've accidentally caught up some of the tails, some of the bottom of my tassel. So, and you don't want two strands. You want to make sure that you don't get the other end of your working yarn out of that, that you get it out of there. So we've got our knot right there. Now we're going to go up underneath that and back up to the top. Just come out close to the first knot you made. And see, I did it again. Caught some of those up. So if you're working in a chair, it's much easier. You can lay it more on your lap. And you can, you know, fluff these up a little bit to round it off some if you need to. I have a little bump there that's bugging me. I'm just going to push it in. Pretty little tassel. And you can cut that extra length that you started with. I'm just going to do what I normally do and lay it down. You can also lay it down and trim up your edges. Nobody's going to notice if they're not exactly the same. But that trims it up just a bit. Now we've still got our yarn needle attached to the tassel. So pick up your, your garment that you're working on. And wherever you want to place your tassel, I try to go through this corner stitch right here and go all the way around the stitch. So you can let the tassel hang or you can set it on the table wherever you're working at. And make sure that you're not working with two strands. You want to keep that free end loose. Snug it up against there. You don't want to get too snug just yet. Let me get this closer for you. And I'm going to dive in where I had wrapped the top and go underneath where I had placed my first knot. And then I'm going to go back up underneath that stitch again and go back underneath the knot again. Back up underneath the stitch again. It's not pertinent that you hit the same spot each time, but you do that three or four times. Now I'm going to make another knot. You can do it from the back side of the garment if you want, just so it doesn't create too much bulk toward the front. And just get underneath those wraps that you just did through the stitch. Take your working yarn, wrap your needle three times. If you want a smaller knot, two, two wraps is sufficient. And then hold your knot, pull your yarn through again. And now that is nice and secure. You can do another one if that's what you want to do. It's not going to show. Go back through the middle of your tassel. And in the middle of that wrap we made around the head of the tassel. And just come up into the middle of your tassel. Not right like that. Now you can take your yarn needle off. Lay the tassel back down flat. Give it a little brushing. And snip that tail off. And at this point, if you, you hold it up and you think it looks too crooked, you can go ahead and give it another little 
haircut. Use some big scissors. That way you don't have to smash down your tassel ends and disrupt all of them as you're smashing them down. There you have the tassel. Nice, quick, easy method. Each one of these, from start to finish, uh, and even putting it on, takes me about 10 minutes now, if that. Um, I've not timed myself officially. I'm just guesstimating it's about 10 minutes. So it makes a nice finishing effect to your wrap. Let's see if I can get this back farther. I don't have the other side of the pocket sewn up yet. But there she is. Okay, so you're going to do that to all four corners if you're doing your tassels. And I thank you for joining me. This has been a really um, quick process for me to make these tutorials other than the editing, all the editing. <laughs> and I did have fun with this project and can't wait to wear it. I hope you enjoy yours if you make it. And join me next time for our next uh, tutorial series. Um, the next one is actually, I've got a couple of videos up. If you look up the preamble ramble uh, for the free birds cape scarf, that is the next tutorial. And it's more of a designing journey. So please join me there and um, I will talk to you guys later. Have a great day or night wherever you are. God bless.